Hi, Bob here with JD Squared. Hope you're having a great day. I made a video here recently where I showed you how to import an NC1 file into Camelot and process it so that we could take it out and cut and mark it on our XR rotary cutter. During that video, I ran into a slight little bug in Camelot to where I couldn't shorten one of the contours. So I mentioned in the video that I would... Um, bring the subject matter up to Devin, and he could take a look and fix it a bug. Well, I went ahead and did that, and he mentioned that which way or which method that I used to shorten down the contour. And I told him, and he said that was not the preferred method. He told me the preferred method, and the good news is it works 100% of the time perfectly. So what I'm going to do in this video is I'm going to show you how to shorten that contour using a method called split contours. It's actually really, really cool. Now, another thing happened. The gentleman who had sent us a sample NC1 file, he had a question about how did I calculate the drill feed down rate um, because he knew what size holes those were and they were oversized and a twist drill wasn't going to get it. So anyway, we'll talk about both of those. Let's talk about the, the drill first just because it's the quickest and the easiest. I calculated the feed down rate for the drill on a based on a twist drill because I wanted to try out these new little short stubby three quarter inch welding drills on this particular part because remember I'm not making the whole part it's not a part that's actually going to be used in the field so that's why we're drilling some holes we're plasma cutting some holes and some of the other holes we're just marking so that I don't waste this entire piece of metal now the reason I want to test this drill is normally We've been drilling with either an annular drill bit, which is what this is right here. This is a 13 16 drill, or we're drilling with a drill chuck, this right here. Let me get it up where you could see it. Yeah, or this drill chuck. Well, here's the problem. Here's your shank right here and here. Look at the difference in length once I put it into the drill. It's a tremendous from here to here. That's a tremendous a, a difference in length. So what happens is we just started shipping out all the drill kits for the XR machines, and some of these kits are dual drills. Well, when you get them in the machine next to each other, the length, they get into each other's way. So I wanted to experiment with the short stubby drills because they don't get in each other's way. That's why I'm doing it. So instead of calculating on six teeth, per revolution. I just calculated off two teeth, which meant I had two thousandths chip load per flute times two flutes times 450 RPM I drill. That's how I came up with the 1.8 inches right here. So hopefully I answer that question. If I was using the annular drill, I would definitely tune that down probably to maybe a 1,000 chip load or maybe even less than that. Whatever the drill felt like, you know, or sounded like it was, it liked, that's what I would have changed it to. All right, that question's out of the way. Let's move on now and talk about the slight little bug fix that I thought we had to make, and it turns out we don't. In the previous video that I shot, I shortened the contours down. Let me show you what I did. And I didn't really do anything wrong, but I, I should have done it differently. And what it is, is I went and I added a contour. So you could, now you're going to need to watch that video to understand what I'm talking about. This is an addendum to that video. So please watch that one first. Anyway, in that video I showed you where you could pick a face, you could pick what's called a wire. That's a wire and a wire is a completely uh, enclosed profile. In other words, it ends exactly where it starts right to the start point. That's a, that's a wire. Now an edge is just an edge. And that's what I had done. I had said, okay, give me a new edge on the start contour. Let's go ahead and make one contour. So I did that. Then I went in, I closed that. I had to edit the contour because one thing, it's going in the wrong direction. And just for you new people out there, let's just say I was cutting around a phone. You always want to be on the right side of the cut path. So in this case, I'm going around it this way, which is counterclockwise. If I was cutting a hole, I would be on the right side of the cutting path in a hole. I would actually be going clockwise instead of counterclockwise. So what we need to do right here is you could see that if we were going to be on the right side of the cutting path, we'd actually be cutting into our metal. We want to be on this side. All I got to do is reverse the contour by clicking right here. 
Now the contour is reversed. Well, the problem came in that when we start cutting, if we start cutting right here, we're cutting through the entire flange. Well, the consumable was sized for three eighths inch thick metal. It's not gonna cut through two inches. So the plasma arc tends to wander a little bit. Now, some people that doesn't bother, um, but some people it does. I'm one of those. So what I like to do is shorten the path so I don't actually cut into the contour. So what we do is we were to come over here and let's just say I wanted to shorten the end and the start points by three quarters of an inch. So right now you can see where we're starting here at that dot and we're ending over here at the green dot. If I hit the offset, see what happened? It moved this one in properly. That's the start point, but the end point, it didn't do it. Now, Murphy's Law kicks in, and if we do it on the rear one, it works perfectly. So we have to find that little bug. However, having said that, Devin said this isn't the best way to do it. Let me show you his preferred method. Um, it's also going to teach you a new trick with Camelot, and it's called splitting the contour. First thing we need to do is let's go ahead and edit the contour. I want to get rid of this contour right here. So let's delete that contour. Now we're going to add a contour up here. This time I'm going to add a wire. I'm actually going to add that entire track right there. It's on the start. I want it on my start contour side. And if you remember some previous videos, the start cut is farthest away from the chuck side of the machine. Even though we're not using the chuck in the machine because we're cutting this part laying flat, we're not rotating it. Uh, we still have a start and an end cut side. The end cut would be this side all over here nearest the chuck. So I'm going to make one contour on the layer start cut. There it is right there. So we got that. Now let's go ahead and make our wire, our profile for the rear also. But this time I want to put it on the end cut layer and I want to use an end cut contour. So I'm going to pick that there. Notice it's all enclosed in red and I'm going to make that contour right there. So very easily I was able to make my contours and what we want to do is shorten them up right here. We don't want to start at this corner and go all the way to this corner. Well, by selecting split contour right here, I could now literally just pull my mouse down, zoom in a little bit so you can see it. And if I go along the contour, I could find out, all right, where do I want to split it? So let's just say I decide I'm going to split it right here. Remember the idea of cutting and marking the stair string or flat is that we are going to manually cut the flanges later. It's a great time saver to actually cut them manually and don't let the machine cut those flanges because you got to rotate it to rotate the part and we want to save as much time as possible. So what we're going to do is we are going, we've moved our split there and we're going to hit split contour and you can see what just happened. So if I zoom out and I select it, well, I'm still in split contour mode. Let me get out of that. You could see where, yeah, there's our contour right there and you could see the split right there. However, it's still a contour. It's still going around the entire part. So let's go over to split contour again and select location on the part. And I'm just going to drag my butt, my button right here and I'm going to click it and I'm going to split it. Now this number right here is how big of a split do you want to put in it? And we default to one millimeter, which is about 40 thousandths of an inch. So let's say split contour there. Now, if I close and I select this contour here, did it split it? No, I must have not hit it correctly. Let me hit it again. All right, we're going to split right here, and I'm going to split it, and there it goes. I guess I didn't push the button hard enough. Okay, now if we zoom out a little bit, we move over. If we select this profile, notice we don't have this one selected. This is the profile we want because it's shortened. It, it didn't go the whole way. Now, what we need to do is let's go ahead and do that real quick on the backside contour back here. We want basically the same thing, split contour. And let's go and split it right here. And I hit split and I could see that it split. Come over here, do the same thing right there. And I'm just eyeballing this, it's not that big of a deal. Notice it split it. Now let's do this, let's close that tool. Let's go to edit contours, select the bottom one, this one here, click delete. Now it's gone. Let's go ahead and rotate over here. 
select this deep this one here delete it it's gone now if i close i don't want to close the edit contour yet i'll show you why now i'm left with this that feed there but notice it's not going corner to corner we've shortened it up so we're not going to cut into that flange that's exactly what we want to do now we are going the wrong direction because remember i told you we want to be on this side heading in this direction Notice if I zoom in, we're on the wrong side going the wrong direction. So what we need to do is pick the contour right there and reverse it by clicking here. So if we reverse it, we're good right there. Now, on the upper contour from that previous video, I mentioned that I do not want to cut this here. I just want to mark it because from about this section right here to here, we're doing nothing but marking, and that way I'll just saw cut this off later, throw away that part, and I save about four feet of metal, about $120. You know, and since this isn't a real part, I, don't, I hate the whole idea of throwing this in a dumpster. So that's what we're doing for this video, which means we want this side here marking. Now, in that previous video, I'd already done all this work. I already had the marker operations. So let's go to the end cut double click on it. Notice I have it set as a marker. We're good to go on that one. However, on the start cut right here, let's double click on that, bring it over here. There's a couple things I want to show you. In fact, um, one of them is I've set the lead in and the lead out to zero. Normally they're going to be set at about a hundred thou, three millimeters, something like that. I don't want that. I want to start burning right on the cut and burn on, burn in on the line and not into the part. So I've reduced that to zero. I've also made sure that my, I have 65 amp shielded. Now notice what's happened is before we had flipped the offset trying to fix the problem. I just got to put it back to normal. So let's put it back to normal, say, okay. Now, if we zoom in, let me get a, let me get a top view of it if I can. Yeah, this is the side right here. Notice now, we're well that's the back view that's our marker side this is our current view notice we're looking pretty actually we're still a little bit inboard why am i still inboard let me go double it again i'm wondering if i'm just not hitting the buttons hard enough so that's the start cut i'm going to go here i've got a normal cut there's your manual there's normal zero 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 okay okay well it doesn't like that. So in that case, let's just flip it. Let's go to flipped. Say, okay. And now it flipped it to the outside. See right there. And that's what you're wanting to look for. So whenever I do any programs, let's say I'm working on a, a, a five axis machine or a, a regular CNC. I, I do a lot of operations. We use Fusion 360 here to do a lot of our, our programming. And I go through every operation and I eyeball the operation to make sure that I selected it right or the program didn't change something, it, it changed something for me. That's happened quite a bit. Um, so that's a good rule of thumb, check that out. Now, real quick about split contours. The technique that I just showed you will work anywhere. So for instance, I could come into a hole right here and say, I don't want this hole, I don't want this part to fall out. Um, so I could have gone to split contour, come right here, split it there, said split, there it split. And then I could have come right over here and said split it there. Now, when we cut, we're going to cut here and here. I got my lead ends turned off. I would probably turn them back on, have them come from the inside out. But the bottom line is when I cut this cut and that cut, this hole is not falling out. So that's why split contours came about because say you're cutting a very long piece and you don't want the piece to actually fall in half, you could, or, or break in half, you can come along and you could split the contour in a few spots that'll be easily cuttable with a uh, cutoff tool or a plasma torch. And that way the part doesn't just fall willy nilly out of the machine. But I don't wanna do that, so I'm gonna hit Control Z twice to put back my hole the way it was. All right, the only thing we have left to do now is rerun the nest program. So I rerun that. Now I can regenerate my code go over there. I'm going to save it to the same file I saved before. So it says yes. Now what I'm going to do is I'm going to put my USB drive into my computer. 
and it's going to pop up right here. Let's drag it over here to you. And what I'm going to do is a trick I learned. I don't want to go to the folder where all this stuff is and it saved it. I figured out later I could select save G code up here. And what I'll do is I'll just highlight that again and I will just drag, hold down my left mouse button and I will copy it into that folder, say replace it on the USB because you can see right here that's what it is. Cancel out of that. Now all I've got to do is take eject the USB, take it out there and cut it. And that will be the purpose of our next video. I hope I've made a couple of things clearer in this video. I thought it was important that we shoot this addendum before we go out there so you kind of know a little bit better what's going excuse me what's going on so let me go and um start setting up for that job thank you for watching look forward to talk to you later bye